What's going on y'all? I'm Czar, and in this video I want to go over the four new features that were announced for Studio One 5.4 and give you my thoughts on them and show them to you. So we'll hop right into this. So Personas announced Studio One 5.4 today, and one of the biggest new features we have is native support for Apple M1 Silicon. This is pretty huge because there's still a lot of major players in Pro Audio that have yet to announce M1 compatibility natively. Some of them still run with the Rosetta 2 translator, but uh, for native support is taking it a step further. So glad to see that arrive. Even though I don't have an Apple M1 Mac, it's good to know that Studio One is now uh, future-proofed. Uh, we still have some, like I said, some major players that haven't announced it. Uh, Waves isn't supported yet with M1 natively. Uh, Pro Tools Carbon is, but... <laughs> I don't know anyone who has Carbon. You've, you've got Pro Tools or even HD that's still not supported natively. And uh, Isotope is another one that hasn't announced uh, native support yet. And so, you know, we should get them hopefully soon, but good to see Personas go ahead and announce this. Uh, let's hop into session here and look at the next new feature we have, which is chord display. So if you right click on the chord track, we now get a pop-up that will play along or show the chords and show the upcoming chord as well. So I'm just going to play this here so you can see it in action. All right, you also have a input chord where you can play your MIDI keyboard and that will show you the chord that you're playing which is really nice. So this chord display I can see being really useful for someone who's playing along and you can see what chord is coming up next and the input chord of course is helpful if you like me I know what keys sound good together but I don't know what chord it is so this tells you what chord it is. I've been previously using uh, Scalar 2 to you know figure out what chords I'm playing so that's really nice there. Next thing is multiple format support. So if we go to mix down, we now can select multiple formats to export all at one time. This is something I have been wanting for years and it's something that I really missed from uh, being a previous Logic user. This is something that Logic has had uh, ever since I was using it. So it's something that I definitely missed. Now with this, the way that I would use this is WAV file and MP3 file. I would export these at the same time. MP3, I can shoot over to the client to have them uh, check out the mix. And if they approve it, I've got a WAV file already created, ready to send to mastering. So very excited to have this feature here. It seems like a small thing, but it really is a time saver. It's kind of annoying for me to go back into a session after a client has approved a mix and then uh, do another uh, print of a WAV file. So maybe saving the best for last, uh, the last new feature we'll look at is called Plugin Nap, which is really interesting and I don't know if any other DAW is able to do this. So this might be one of those features that once again, I say, how come no one else thought about this? So Plugin Nap, what it does is when there's no signal present, it is going to turn off your plugins, allowing you to use more processing power. So I haven't really messed with it yet, so we're going to do this right now. So to turn it on, if you go down to performance, uh, you'll see the option right here. And interestingly, this isn't on by default. I don't know if, it'll, if that will, if we select this, and save it as a template if it'll turn it on by default. But I would think that, that this would be on by default. But so when we turn this on, let me see if any of these plugins nap here. Okay, yeah, some of them did. So this moon icon means that it is napping. And then uh, once that track or signal plays uh, with that plugin on it is going to kick in. So I've got the track here. So what we're going to do, let's, we're going to test this out. So I've got my buffer at 32 samples right now. So let's play this with it. Let's keep it on. Let's play it with it on and let's keep an eye on the CPU as well 
There's the napping here and just see how this works. And then we'll turn it off and see what kind of CPU difference we get. So right now, I'm just gonna say we're idle at 19% CPU here. Let's see what's sleep. We've got the uh, Denise Audio Sweeper is sleep. Got two instances of that. And that is uh, this track here that plays at the beginning and then on this impact a track that comes in as MIDI later. I thought I saw, okay, and we've got two instances of Fat Channel, which should be on my drums. Yeah, right here. Okay. All right, uh, let's see what this is about. Oh, we've jumped up to... Okay, so maybe something turned on because the fat channels were sleeping and now they're on. Now we're up to about 25%. But uh, let's play this and watch this and let's uh, see what happens. Okay, so an observation I noticed here is that in this blank area here, where I had some piano chords playing, one from the Grand Rhapsody from Waves, uh, that it did not nap that, I realized. And I think the highest I saw it hit on the CPU was 39%, even though it looks like we're over 39, just idle here now, uh, which is interesting. Same plugins are still napped. Okay. All right, but let's turn this off. Okay, so we're still at the, eh, what's this, 38% idle now with it off. Uh, but let's play it and see how the CPU performs now. <laughs> Okay, so I think the highest I saw it go there was maybe 56, 57. So definitely more CPU being used without plug-in nap. So, you know, I'd have to look at how to, I guess, get this on by default if you want that on by default. Or I'd say you could leave it off and, you know, if you start to run into performance issues, maybe then enable it. But it didn't i'm surprised that it didn't turn off the waves grand rhapsody as well as the contact track which is also blank in, in that area and to my knowledge this is supposed to work with obviously the presonus stock plugins as well as third plug third party plugins uh, but i'm surprised it didn't turn uh, that one off and even i guess out of the whole thing we've got blank space here even in the beginning so i feel like it should be let's turn it back on i feel like i feel like it should be napping those tracks before we even start because nothing plays until what bar three so but man i just don't completely understand how this works but uh, we were able to see that it did save on cpu uh, but there are four of the new features announced, or the biggest uh, new features announced in Studio One 5.4. I'm gonna do another video covering some of the smaller improvements that was made. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content from me, then of course, you know what to do. But let me know your thoughts so far on the Studio One 5.4 update. I think it's a solid update. I think people are, 
I haven't really been in the Facebook group to see what people are saying about it, but I know usually when an update comes out and there's not a ton of new features, people get upset. But, you know, to me, Studio One has just added so much over the years that they really don't have that much to add to it. I don't think we're going to see another update that has, you know, 20 new features or anything like that because so much has already been added to it. And, you know, from now, we're just kind of slowly building on top of that. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of this update. Uh, any questions, comments, let me know, and I'll catch you all next time. I want to invite you to check out my podcast, The Faders Up Podcast, where we discuss pro audio and beyond. We discuss everything from recording to gear to the music business. So if you're an audio engineer, songwriter, recording artist, music producer, this podcast is for you. We recently started season two, and we're going to have a lot of listener questions on this season, as well as some really cool guests that's lined up and giveaways as well. So if you've already subscribed and followed the podcast, thank you. If you haven't, it's available on all platforms, and I encourage you to check it out. Also, rate it and review it and let us know what you think.